disposable world, essential items of lasting beauty are increasing in worth. Experience the fulfillment of creating heirlooms for succeeding generations with your own hands. Hi, my name is Frank Strazza with the Heritage School of Woodworking. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut an arch using nothing more than a saw, a chisel, and a spoke shave. If you don't have access to a bandsaw, this is a great way to cut an arch. In this shelf here that I'm making, I wanna incorporate an arch. It gives me strength out here, but it also gives me the uh, lightened look. So I'm gonna draw the arch in place. I'm gonna start by coming up by eye, oh, about five eighths of an inch, half an inch up. We can even find the center, which we can measure. Always double check your measurements that way. And now I've got a center mark right here. This gives me the high point of the arch. You can actually draw the arch with your hand like this. So I'm using my, my arm as a, an arc and just draw that on there. Now this may not be perfect, but you'd be surprised at how the spoke shave, which is the other tool we'll be using, will fare this curve. Whenever I'm making a piece of furniture and I need an arch, I'll typically make a pattern prior to doing the arch. So what you can do is you can actually make a half pattern and then flip it over. Um, you could even draw it like this, draw it on there, then flip it over and draw it on like that, and you can see whatever can inconsistencies there may be in your arch here. Let's go ahead and cut it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it in the vise and take a dovetail saw and make a series of cuts that actually stop about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch above my pencil line. The cuts are spaced about every three quarters to an inch apart. And what we're doing here is we're creating stop cuts. And as you can see, they're varied in height right along the entire length of the board there. Next step is to come back with a chisel and remove the waste. I've turned the piece around so that you can see my chisel following the line. You'll notice what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the chisel with the bevel down and I'm gonna follow along that line. Also notice how I keep the chisel engaged in the cut. Now as I work this along like this, I can raise the chisel. If I want a deeper cut, I can simply raise the chisel. If I want a more shallow cut, if I bring the chisel down like this, I'll get more of a shallow cut. So I can actually adjust the chisel as I'm working it along. Adjust the depth of cut. Now as I get towards the center, you'll notice the grain is going perfectly straight, but the arch is going up. If I continued hitting the chisel like this, what would happen is it would actually split out right there and ruin my piece. So I'm gonna come back from this side and work back this way. Again, adjusting the depth of cut by how much I raise or lower the chisel. Keeping, I'm watching that angle as I, as I go through, watching the edge of the chisel, work it, work it, and there we go. So that's how we cut an arch using the stop cut method. Now this is somewhat rough, and even if you did cut this out with the bandsaw, you'd still want to smooth it out. And that's where the spoke shave comes in, which is essentially just a mini plane. Of course it needs to be sharpened, and it's sharpened in exactly the same way that a plane is sharpened. I've got um, the blade which goes in, and this is beveled down. This is the angle, so this is bevel. Here's the bevel, and it's facing down. So it goes in the in the shave like this. There's a couple different models of these. The most of them are based after the Stanley series, a Stanley 51 or 151. The 51 did not have any adjusters. The 151 has little thumb screws to adjust the blade in and out. The way I adjust it 
is I loosen the blade ever so slightly to where there's still tension on the blade and I can push it with my thumb or my forefinger here and push it in and out and adjust it just right. Now that it's nice, I tighten this down. Let's go ahead and start shaping this with the spoke shave. The way to hold it is one finger here, one finger there. Your thumbs go right up at the top and you can actually skew it like this. Now it's set a little aggressive. I'm gonna back the blade off just a little bit to where barely any is coming off. Now let's try it from this side. Again, I've gotta work from the top down to the center. And we just smooth that curve right out. Great thing about a spoke shave is you can use it for fairing the curves on a cabriole leg. You can use it for shaping the curves on any sort of headboard or even the back of a violin. You can use it for shaping the curve on the back of a violin. So this technique is, is very useful. You can also pull it towards you, just like so. And we can use it for cutting the edges, that is rounding the edges just slightly, like this. Again, working from the top down to the center. And now let's check it. Let's look and see how fair our cur how fair this curve is. We'll put it on here like this, line it up, and we'll mark it. So I'm going to mark it like this. Then I'll take it and flip it over, just like so. Again, lining it up with the shoulders. And you can see that it is almost perfect. And there we have it. We've got our arch that's mirrored on both sides and we're ready to cut our second arch. Now I've finished uh, cutting both arches, and the next step is to put a chamfer on the ends of these through tenons, as well as on the top and bottom of the, sh of the shelf pieces. So we'll cut a chamfer on there, we'll cut a chamfer on the end of the tenons, and we'll clean up all of our parts with a hand plane prior to final assembly, dry fitting, and then glue up.